this video, we will be showing you how to give your child a rectal enema with a balloon type catheter. First, let's review what an enema is. A rectal enema is a procedure that means pushing a large or small amount of liquid into the colon, the lower digestive tract, where stool, also called poop, gets pushed out. This liquid could be a combination of saline, which is salt water, and additives like glycerin or castile soap, or medications like sodium phosphate, fleet, or bisacodyl. This mixture helps the body to empty the stool. Some are over the counter and others require the balloon catheter we are going to use. We usually like to start on a combination of saline and glycerin or castile as this is a simple combination of ingredients that works to soften and remove stool from the colon. To get started, gather your supplies. This will be saline and either glycerin, castile soap, or a combination of both, depending on what was ordered for your child. The saline should be room temperature or warmed under warm water like how you would heat up a baby bottle. Now let's prepare the gravity bag. The bag has a roller clamp that controls the flow of the enema and is what makes it start and stop. Roll the clamp down to clamp off the tubing. Pour the prescribed amount of saline into the bag plus a little extra since some will stay in the tubing. Add in glycerin, castile soap, or both as prescribed. Shake or stir it to make sure it's fully mixed. This will keep the tube from getting clogged or blocked. Next, you will release the roller clamp and watch as the solution goes down through the tubing. When it starts coming out at the end, roll the clamp back down to stop the flow. Then prepare the catheter and a syringe. The catheter has two ports on the end. One is used for the solution and the other is used to inflate the balloon at the end. The balloon helps the catheter stay in the rectum during the enema. Pull back 15 to 30 milliliters of air in the syringe and place the syringe on the balloon port. Test the balloon by pushing air into the port and watching the balloon inflate or fill up. If the balloon inflates well, remove the air from the balloon and prepare your child. You may want to have something to distract your child, like a favorite toy, book, or iPad. Have your child lie on their side or on their back with their legs curled up to their chest. Use plenty of water-soluble lubricant on the tip of the catheter and insert it into the rectum. Inflate the balloon with 15 to 30 milliliters of air, just like you did before. Gently pull the catheter toward your child's anal opening to help block the saline solution from draining out. If the solution leaks out during the enema, you may want to fill the balloon with water instead of air to create a better seal. It is possible that your child may poop out the catheter during the enema. That's okay. Once the catheter is in place, remove the syringe. Hook the tubing up to the other port of the catheter. Slowly release the clamp on the tubing. The enema solution should flow in over about five minutes. You can change the rate of the flow by rolling the clamp up or down. Some people like to have the enema tubing connected before they insert the catheter. The enema solution should stay in for five to 10 minutes. After five to 10 minutes, help your child move to the toilet. Keep the catheter in place while you do this. While your child is on the toilet, deflate the balloon by hooking the syringe up to the balloon port and removing the air or water. Remove the catheter. Your child will begin passing stool and water into the toilet over 30 to 45 minutes. Again, a favorite toy, book, or movie may help pass the time. We usually like to have the enema results completed after one hour of sitting. Sometimes it also helps to have your child get up after they think they are done, move around, then sit back down for five to 10 minutes to ensure everything is out. This process may take some practice for you and your child, and each kid is different. Find what works best for you both. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to call your child's provider.